headquartered here in Spokane, Washington State University's Elson S. Floyd College of Medicine is the second public medical school in Washington State. It was founded in 2015 and ushered in its inaugural class in 2017. In this field report, we catch up with the school and one of its first graduates to see where the last five years has taken them. It's an issue that's been around for years. Rural and underserved communities in Washington state simply do not have enough doctors. According to the Health Resources and Services Administration, as of 2021, only a little over 100 rural health clinics exist in all of Washington state. A need which Washington State University, through its Elson S. Floyd College of Medicine, aims to address by expanding access to medical education and residency programs to hopeful physicians, so that they may return and give back to the same rural communities that serve them. Founded in 2015, the WSU College of Medicine was named after the late Dr. Elson S. Floyd, former WSU president, who was lauded as a leader and a visionary, and credited for his pursuit and hard work in creating WSU's very own accredited medical school. Dr. John Tomkoviak, dean of the college, tells us how the school is making Dr. Floyd's vision for the school a reality. And I'm super humbled and honored to have been given the opportunity to start this medical school, which is really focused on helping all Washingtonians achieve better health. When the medical school was really envisioned, it was really meant to serve the parts of the state that maybe hadn't been best served uh, up until now. And as we've built this medical school, uh, we recognize that we need to bring uh, top tier research that is really focused on our communities. Dr. Radha Nandagopal is the school's education director. To show empathy and introduce yourself. She says the scarcity of doctors in rural areas brought an urgent need to have a medical school immersed within these communities. I think we were faced with a real shortage in the state of Washington of uh, medical doctors all over the state, except for just a couple of counties. And we were facing down a huge retirement of physicians um, and a huge um, dearth in expertise across the state, and we really wanted to fill that. In order to pursue this mission as an up-and-coming institution, the Elson S. Floyd College of Medicine first needed the help of the state legislature. Up until 2015, WSU was not allowed by the state to offer a medical degree to students hoping to become doctors. But that all changed when House Bill 1559, sponsored by the House Committee on Higher Education, with the leadership of Representative Marcus Riccelli of Spokane, was passed. The bill allowed the Board of Regents at WSU to offer and teach medicine as a major line of study and to combine that with a community-based medical school and teaching health clinic on site. For six years, WSU has used existing buildings in its Spokane campus for its medical students. One of them, recently vacated by Eastern Washington University, is slated for a renovation in order to house most of the College of Medicine, thanks to a $15 million capital funding from the state legislature. This completes state financing for the college, which includes $3.6 million in operating funds to also support the expansion of its student capacity from 60 to 80 medical students per cohort. Spokane Senator Andy Billig, who along with former Senator Michael Baumgartner, sponsored Senate Bill 5487, companion bill to House Bill 1559. Senator Billig considers it a major breakthrough, not only for Eastern Washington, but for the rest of the state. But I think there was a recognition that this was important, not just from uh, a medical standpoint and a health standpoint of having more providers, but also from an economic development standpoint to have a medical school and the research that goes along with that uh, is something that um, we knew would pay dividends. But it's always challenging to get funding because uh, there's a limited amount of funding and there's seemingly an unlimited amount of need and, and really good productive programs that we can invest in. We worked very hard for initial funding, but then also uh, several 
further increments of funding to grow the medical school to its current size, which is 300 uh, students and 80 new students in each class. There's a lot of need in Eastern Washington and throughout the state for physicians and those 80 students uh, every year graduating from the medical school um, are gonna do really good work in our community. We asked Dr. Tomkoviak how that funding has benefited the school in the last five years. It was really important that the legislature, uh, you know, give us that final appropriation to increase our class size from 60 to 80 as was originally planned. Being a community-based medical school, we don't have our own teaching hospital and we're reliant upon community partners to help train our future physicians. Unfortunately, there wasn't one building that could hold, uh, you know, all of the students, faculty, and staff for the medical school. So we're spread out across seven different buildings right now. This appropriation by the state legislature to help us remodel the building that was formerly occupied by Eastern University is going to be a real step forward in getting the space we need to teach our students in the model that we want and have our faculty and staff in close approximation to those teaching spaces. It's really going to make us more effective in our mission. He says that with the help of the state, they've also expanded their research enterprise, which is critically aligned with their mission of understanding the utmost needs of rural health care and meeting them. We're already nearing the top 100. And so for only being five years old, we're working really hard again at making sure the investment that the state is making in us is paying off in part in doing research that is going to help and improve the health of all Washingtonians. The funding also allowed WSU College of Medicine to support the required operating costs of what it takes to educate hopeful doctors in 2020 and 2021. So they would have access to the latest and the most up-to-date textbooks, um, visual diagnostic anatomy uh, atlases um, and other ways to really practice their clinical skills and then the ability to send them so that they could stay with host families at their clinical campuses. All of those things take money, of course, and so we're really grateful for the support from the legislature. In the summer of 2021, the Elson S. Floyd College of Medicine presented its inaugural class of physicians, with over 21% of them raised in rural counties, over 18% first-generation college graduates, and over 55% coming from a lower socioeconomic background. Part of that inaugural class is Dr. Brent Conrad, who came to the Elson S. Floyd College of Medicine with big dreams from a small town. My very first application cycle, I was actually rejected by every program that I applied to. So I had to spend a really difficult year of improving my application. And thankfully, um, I had the opportunity to grow over that year. And then also I got to be part of the inaugural class at a med school right in my own backyard. Dr. Conrad looks back at the start of his medical journey with gratitude to WSU's unique criteria for admission. While there are standardized requirements that are typical to most medical schools, there is a unique way that WSU cuts against the grain, and they say for good reason. We rely less on grades and test scores and more on people's behaviors and actions. It's more about, you know, how have you served your communities? How have you demonstrated a commitment, let's say, to underserved or rural populations? That's allowing us to choose people who really have the passion and desire to serve the communities. A lot of pre-medical students will ask us, is there a particular GPA, is there an MCAT score? We never draw the line and say, you can't pass a standardized test, you can't be a doctor. We would never say that. We help you get there. Dr. Conrad is passionate about rural outreach and is focused on finishing his residency in family medicine. After my residency, I plan to return to my hometown of Colfax and continue the legacy of providing health care in that community. They have a small community hospital, ER, and primary care clinic. I had the opportunity to work at several drive through clinics here in Spokane, testing people for the COVID virus. And then I was also part of a nightly screening team that would go around to various homeless shelters and check people for symptoms. And th those were both really effective measures early on in the pandemic to keep our rates low. Another unique curriculum feature that makes the WSU College of Medicine stand out is its focus on individualized learning and community immersions. 
bringing health care to rural areas so that individuals who need medical attention don't have to travel outside of their communities to receive care. We want to train our students in those communities. So we have campuses in Vancouver, Tri-Cities, and Everett in addition to here. And then from those hubs, they go out into much smaller communities to actually get their medical training. Along with its focus on population health, the college also hopes to address Washington's health care gap by using an equity lens in their medical training which comes embedded in their student curriculum. We use a lot of simulated experiences, a lot of real experiences with real patients in the communities to help our students really understand how to communicate with families and patients. How do you really provide good care for our populations who happen to be um, international refugees or for populations who happen to be coming um, as migrant workers and are only temporarily located in the state. Throughout our curriculum, we're also taught about some of the demographics and socioeconomic factors that are individual to each population and community. Whether that's financial or issues with insurance or all the different conditions that they might have because of where they're living and coming from, and as I move into residency, I feel like I have a little bit better awareness than I would have had otherwise to all the conditions that are playing a role in my patient's health. But the goals of the Elson S. Floyd College of Medicine in bridging industry and academe don't simply stop there. Aside from being an on-site facility for training future rural physicians, a center for medical research, and one that will yield economic benefits for Spokane and the rest of the state, it also offers leadership certification for doctors, something that the school takes pride in. Part of our curriculum, our students actually get a certificate in leadership, which is one third of a master's degree. And that is a real difference between our school and other schools. Most medical schools don't really have a curriculum that's explicitly about how do you get along with your team members? How do you resolve conflict about emotional intelligence or you know, about quality and safety in the healthcare environment? And that's really what this leadership certificate aims to focus on. Looking at how the college has grown in the last five years, Dr. Tomkoviak says their team and number of affiliates has grown from tens to the thousands. But there's still more work to be done. We here have been able to build a culture where we're constantly adapting and even though we're five years old just as an example we've changed our curriculum about 25 percent from the time our first class went through which i really think speaks to that culture of we don't want to be stagnant we want to constantly do things better and be you know the best version that we can be he also shares what the future of the school looks like and how they plan on sustaining their success while keeping aligned with their mission. It's not enough just to graduate medical students, but we also have to find more places for them to train. And particularly on the east side of the Cascades, there's a real disparity uh, of about 2,500 spots in the state. Almost 2,000 of them are on the west side of the Cascades and just less than 500 here on the east side. So that's a real priority for us. We know 70% of the time when a resident graduates from that program, they will stay within 100 miles to practice. And so we already have our first program in Everett, in association with Providence, a, a 16 uh, student uh, internal medicine program. And we have our second program in the works at Pullman Regional Hospital, uh, which will be a family medicine program. We have students right now now that come from about 30 of the 39 counties from the state of Washington. In five years from now, I hope we have at least one student from every single county in the state who has gone to medical school here. And then I hope in five years we are actually delivering health care to people in all of those 39 counties in one way or another. Since its inception and with one successful batch of graduates, the WSU Elson S. Floyd College of Medicine continues with its goal in expanding healthcare access and outreach to rural Washington, helping hopeful physicians reach their dreams of serving their hometowns. Is that there's nothing really special about me. I'm a farm kid from Colfax and I just had a dream to get into medicine and the people here at the college believed in me. And aiming to expand equity in rural health to narrow the health care gap in areas that need the most help. We recognize it takes a lot of different attributes to make a good doctor. And if you're someone who is the first in your family to even go to college, you have a home here, you can be a student here, you can be a faculty member here, and we'll help support you. A once unimaginable feat made possible by the vision and leadership of the late Dr. Elson S. Floyd. 
community grassroots efforts, and the bipartisan support of the state legislature. The Elson Floyd Medical School success can really be seen as sort of a, a case study of how a community can come together with a, a, a vision, and a vision for economic development, a vision for health care, and then partner with the legislators that represent that community and all of the stakeholders who might be involved and then deliver. We understand that we have a real obligation to the people to deliver on the investment that has been made in us and we want to continue to show each and every day how that's a good investment and whether that's through our research, through our clinical care of patients or the education of these amazing future healthcare practitioners, um, we take that very seriously. And so I think we continue to learn that uh, we can't rest on our laurels. We got to continue to do a great job each and every day. For Field Report, this is Angela Nolasco.